Thanks. Okay. All right. We good in the booth? Everybody rolling? Everybody rolling. We're good. Imagine you're an artist, but you're colorblind. What would you do? Would you just mix paints anyway and see how people react? Or would you embrace your colorblindness and maybe use it in your art? Or would you drill into your skull and implant a device to change the way you perceive colors altogether? That's what one artist did, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm Matteo. On today's episode of Zoetic, we're exploring the practice of body hacking and how people are using technology to change their lives in some pretty unconventional ways. We're also gonna talk to a body hacker here in studio to help us understand this topic better. That's gonna be really cool. So let's do this. Okay, so body hackers are people who use technology to enhance some part of themselves, primarily in ways that aren't medically necessary. You might know body hackers by another name, cyborgs. Cyborgs, they call themselves cyborgs. Those in the movement also call themselves grinders or biohackers. What does it look like? Let's go back to that artist. His name is Neil Harbison, and he decided he wanted to transform his colorblindness. So he found a doctor to hack his head to literally implant a device that registers colors as sound so he can hear the colors he's seeing. It works through an antenna that's been fused to his skull and a camera that arches over his forehead. The device creates a specific sound based on which color is directly in front of the camera. The apparatus has fundamentally changed the way he perceives the world and creates his art. For example, he can now walk into a museum and kind of see via his ears the colors in a painting. It also apparently makes him ultra human. He can perceive ultraviolet and infrared light that you and I can't see, which kind of makes me want a camera in my head. Do you want a camera in your head? Do you want to hear ultraviolet light? I want to hear ultraviolet light. Harbison insists that the implant is now an integral part of who he is, and he's become the voice of a movement of people who want to use technology to make their bodies better. He calls it the Cyborg Foundation, and its mission is to protect cyborg rights. But as interesting as body hacking may sound, it does have its critics. Although using technology in our bodies is nothing new, Think about pacemakers, those battery operated machines that get implanted in your chest to make sure your heart beats regularly. They've been around for over 50 years. And doctors are currently experimenting with bionic eyes for the blind by implanting electrodes on the retina, which sounds pretty cyborg-like to me. So why does body hacking make some people uncomfortable? Maybe it's because body hackers don't need their technology to stay alive. Instead, it's more about life enhancement. It can be a really complicated line to walk. Think of cochlear implants, which are mechanical devices that uh, help deaf people hear. You know those videos of babies hearing their mother's voices for the first time, thanks to an implant behind their ear? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest you look it up. They're amazing. These could certainly be considered body hacking. A person won't die without them, but they hold the potential to dramatically alter one's life. So where should a line be drawn? I mean, should we even draw a line at all? When Neil Harbison decided to implant a camera in his skull, he faced opposition from a medical ethics committee. In fact, the procedure was so controversial, the only doctor he could convince to install the implant asked to remain anonymous. And other body hackers aren't turning to doctors at all for their body alterations. Small procedures that are common in the movement like implanting a microchip in your hand to unlock your phone, or being done by everyday people in their basements. The hackers report that doctors are wary of these procedures, which currently seems to be in line with public opinion. A Pew poll found that only 32% of people would want a chip implanted in their brain to improve their cognitive ability. And many of those who identify as religious felt that such modifications cross the line that should not be crossed. So again, should a line be drawn on these types of procedures? And who gets to make that call? I mean, people can alter their bodies with tattoos and piercings anytime they want. Who knows? Maybe someday soon, cameras attached to the skull will be as mainstream as nose rings. What would you do? Would you get a chip implanted in your brain if it made you smarter? What if part of your body needed enhancing? Then what? So to help us get some perspective on these questions, I asked our colleague Dylan to join us here in studio. Dylan has personal experience with this type of body modification. So let's get him in here. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, tell us about your body hack. Uh, so, I mean, it's kind of borderline uh, biohacking. Only thing that it's really good for is bar tricks, but I do have a magnet implanted in my hand. How big is I this can, magnet? Uh, Tell me how big. Like, it's like rice grain size. You have like a rice, a, like grain, a rice grain sized and rare earth magnet. Is it a cut or is it just like kind of like a poke? What do they do? Oh, it was an injection. Cool. Why get a rice grain sized magnet in your hand? I'm really interested in the idea that we can expand some extent our, mm -hmm. our sensory perception of the world. And you're not new to body modification. I'm not new to body modification. Show us, your, have, show us your tongue, man. So I, I do have a split tongue. <laughs> so I brought a couple things um, for you that I want to see if maybe you okay. can try and pick up for me. All right, so this is like a little hair clip. Right, quack, quack. Right, yeah, so I'm gonna take that away from you. Amazing. 
Open handed. And if I like really wanted to freak somebody out, I could be all like. What? Turn towards us? What? <laughs> what? And it's mine. <laughs> I'm really curious to hear from you on the topic of body hacking. Specifically, where do you think the pushback against body hacking comes from? Why is this different than tattoos or piercings? Thank you guys. We appreciate you. Hit us up in the comments. Let us know your ideas on body hacking. And if you have ideas for other stories, give us those too. Thank you. See ya.